So Monique Samuels goes live to explain to us why she divorcing her husband. And in my mind, I'm saying, girl, it ain't none of our business. But since you spilling it, let's joke. Come on, Blazer. It's a beat for me. What's up? It's your girl Voodoo Doll. Oh, girl, I almost caught a cramp in my foot. Girl, y'all was about to hit me high on this thing, and I'm not editing this out. Girl, listen, I'm sorry, y'all. What's up? It's your girl Voodoo Doll back with a quick little Joe's girl. And um, girl, on this episode of I Married Somebody That I Shouldn't Have. Monique Samuels decides to come out. Now, y'all know Chris just did his thirst trap video the other day, you know, in the gym, telling the girls he getting the gains up, you know, for all the girls who want to come and do a little something strange for a piece of change. Uh, and everybody, I guess, started sparking up this whole conversation with Monique Samuels again. And I guess everybody was more or less like, well, girl, what's going on? You know, I'm not a real fan. I'm not a fan of nobody, but I keep saying that. But nevertheless, I don't follow her on social media. I don't think. I don't think I follow her, but I did go down there to get this tea. But, um, oh, I am following her. Look, yeah, let's see. I am following her. Probably followed her from um, Love and Marriage DC and, and Real House Potomac. That's where I started following her, Potomac, because I like that she dragged Ashley. Not Ashley, Candace. Girl, why am I getting all off the subject? Anyway, listen. So she goes live to address fans, basically uh, answering questions. If everybody had questions on why she divorcing her man, the timeline, all of that, uh, she wanted to get up and explain it herself. Now, I thought that this live was very educational. What do I mean by that? What I'm saying is she's speaking about something that I spoke about when it came to Mel from Love and Marriage Huntsville. Mel divorced her husband uh, at Love and Marriage Huntsville. She divorced her husband because he had another baby on her. Not because he was cheating, because she knew he was cheating before they even started the show, the Bait Your Mom. Uh, but she divorced her husband because, you know, she had a, a last straw, which was the baby. I understand. I, it'll be hard for me to accept another baby and I got kids for you and pregnant and all of that. Nevertheless, because we, it's not about that. When Mel divorced her husband, most women were here for it. But there was a large group of black women who was just like, oh, y'all need to go to counseling. Y'all need to make it work for the kids. And da 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 And y'all need to go to church and, and have the pastor pray over you. And all, all of these things that people believe keep marriages together when in fact they just stall and give them a little more time. Because at the end of the day, a person has own, their own autonomy and free will over what they will and will not do within a marriage or any type of relationship for that matter. In a friendship, it does not matter. Um, they choose to do what they want to do. It is up to that person to change. If that person does not change, then you're at the point where you have to look at the no fault divorce thing and say, hey, I don't have to stay in this marriage because you didn't cheat. Or I don't have to stay in this marriage because any other reason. If I feel like I'm unhappy, I have every right to just leave and we can have a healthy co-parenting relationship. That's what Mel did. And I cool old Mel up. I big her up so hard for that because I was like, that is what black women need to see. Now, let me get this straight. I am in no way, shape or form or any type of way uh, telling y'all to go get, get divorced. I am not promoting divorce. I think if you find a relationship in a marriage that you are a uh, you are great in and you feel secure in, you feel loved, you guys are happy, you guys are making financial stride, everything is going well. I am all here for dealing with the little small knickknacks in the road. But when it comes to you being completely unhappy and just sticking around for the kids, that is when you begin to abuse negligently a negligent you you begin to neglect your kids basically and i'm gonna come back for more commentary because i'm gonna kind of break this this video up because i'm i want to kind of like speak on you know parts that i saw that i thought was very educational for everybody to listen to so i'm gonna let y'all hear the first part then i'm gonna come back for some more commentary and then i'm gonna play some more so y'all listen to this first part and i'll come right back um it's like going through a death, you know, in so many ways. Uh, Chris and I have been together for 17 years. We've been married for 11 years. Um, do I do the show at home? No, I do the show in the studio. So yeah, somebody said at the reunion, many, so y'all talking about Love and Marriage DC. Um, 
the reunion that many people believe the reason you did the show was to set up a divorce to Chris. You both laughed, yet here you are. I hope you both find peace. Yeah, so just because we were going through it last year, which we were, last year was very rough. When we were going through our motions and we were trying to figure things out, the goal was not to get divorced. That wasn't where we were last year. Like even when people said last year that we were um, going our separate ways and all of that, Chris and I were trying every which way to figure out like how do we get that connection back? How do we bring it back together? And um, so even at that time, it wasn't true. Like we weren't seeking a divorce. We weren't even, we were separated in a sense of like, okay, you focus on you, I focus on me and let's see what happens. So we have been going through this process and it's been years, you know, like marriage, as many people know, it has its ups and downs, but you get to a point where you feel like you've reached that, that moment of like, you know what is, are we growing? You know, is, is, are we stagnant? Are we moving? Like what's going on? And then you also have to consider the fact that we have three children, you know, who are watching us, our actions and how we interact with each other, how we run our household. That is literally an example for our children of how they're going to live their life, you know, and I don't want our children to ever be in a relationship where they feel like they're not being heard, whether that's on my side or Chris's side, you know, talking at each other, like the marriage becomes like a battlefield. Um, so you get to a point where you also have to consider the fact that we have three little people that are literally looking at us and they're taking notes and they're like, okay, this is what's normal and it's not normal. So, um, so yeah, so that's where we are. Um, you guys don't have to be sorry. Um, it's just a part of life. Unfortunately, sometimes it happens. Some people stay married forever. Um, some people don't. My parents were married for 23 years and got divorced. Um, I know couples that have been married for 60 years and they're miserable and they literally let their whole life just fade away, <laughs> you know? So, um, it's really what you make it. And if you get to a point where you're like, you know what, we have grown so far apart that it may be best that we focus on ourselves individually and then focus on the three important people in our lives, which is, which is our children. And that's what we decided to do. So that's the first part I wanted to touch on. She was literally on this live telling people, hey, look, I get it. Uh, we had our past where we were, you know, going through our, our lowest points and we were working on it. It became exhausting. And hey, look, at some point we just stopped growing because in a marriage, you have to grow. You have to grow with your partner. And she said at the end of the day, they decided that it would be best if they just found a healthy co-parenting relationship and just go their separate ways because she doesn't want that example to be given in front of her kids. Let me tell you something. I have a friend of mine who was married to a man who was, I'm talking about worth nothing, nothing. And she kept saying, I don't want a divorce because of the kids. And I kept saying, but you guys are literally physically fighting. You guys are yelling at each other every day. You guys are at each other's neck like 90 going west. Do you not believe that they hear that and they know that that's going on because children are very, very intelligent. Not to mention you have little girls. Do you want your little girls to think that this is the way that a man should treat them? Is that the vision you want to give your little girls to accept when they grow older and become young women? Not even just your little girls, your sons. You have sons. Do you want that to be the image of a father and a husband and of, a, of a man? When he grows up, he deems that to be acceptable because that's all he knows. That is the biggest factor in all of this. I said the same thing with Mel from Love and Marriage uh, Huntsville. You cannot stay in these relationships for the so-called children and not realize the amount of damage you are doing to the children by staying. I get it. Divorce is traumatic. But at the end of the day, you got to find, I hate this term. I hate this term, but you have to find the lesser of two evils. Now you would think after she said that and made it all perfectly clear, the people in the comments would get it. Apparently they didn't. Let me, let me, let's read some of these comments. Cause I need y'all to see some of this stuff. So now the first comments that stuck out is this first one. It says, Monique, you have small children and you know, they have to be at school practice and other things kids have to do. Plus divorce is traumatic for children. I know you want to be happy, but define happy. I hope you and Chris make it work because ain't nothing out here. It's 2023. Stay with the devil, you know, wishing you all the best. Let me just say this. The only thing I agree with in this comment that she said is 
ain't nothing out here. That is a natural born fact. Now, I'm not saying it's not possible for Monique to move on, but because it is. However, I don't like this lesser of two evils thing. Us black people, especially black women, we do that when we vote. And that's how we end up getting nothing. You know what I mean? Because we're just, instead of going search for the best or what's better, we just try to stick with the lesser of the worst. And it's just horrible. That's horrible advice to give to this woman to be stressed out. She be them withered away or something because she's unhappy. Her kids aren't happy because she's not happy how can she pour into her kids if she's not poured into that does not make sense and then the second one says baby girl i pray you won't regret leaving your husband understand that marriage has peaks and valleys pray about it marriage is sometimes 50 50 60 40 or 30 70 it sounds like everything is about you 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 god bless you both abundantly let me tell you something I don't like about Christians. And if you're a Christian and it ain't you, I'm not talking about you. But I'm talking about the ones who who like to cast their little uh, doubt. Not not doubt. They like to cast their little BS on you and then, you know, paint icing on top with, and put Jesus on top. Let me tell y'all something. The only thing, let me start here. The only thing I agree in this comment with is sometimes it's 50, 50, 60, 40, 30, 70. We get that. Nothing is always evenly, right? Evenly done. My problem with this comment is... You going to tell this girl, go pray about it. Talk about marriage has its peaks and its valleys, duh. And then say, it sounds like everything is about you. What in the world, what did she get out of that that made her think that everything was about her? And at the end of the day, she should be putting herself first. I mean, outside of her kids, why would she be putting him first? She's at a point in time where they've come to an agreement that they are going to just go their separate ways. This is the time, if not any time, to focus on her. But black women is so obsessed with the idea of being married that they will wither away in a 60. Like she said, she know people been married for, married for 60 years and they just miserable. Black women will do that all for the sake of saying I'm married. I don't understand. It's almost like you're, 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 you're administering your own abuse. I don't get that. I truly don't get it. But you're going to tell the girl, it sounds like it's all about you, but God bless you both abundantly. Old lady, go sit down. I don't even know if this lady old, but she giving old lady vibes. She giving Betty right. You know, having a piece of man is better than having no man at all. Don't blame Mr. Charlie. Mr. Charlie is just a man and he's doing the best he can. That's what that lady giving. Girl, go lay down, lady. Where your husband at? Stop trying to worry about this lady husband. Find yours. So then the next comment come along. And this girl say, don't leave your husband. I love y'all. No reasoning behind why she should stay. It's just, hey, don't leave your husband. I like seeing y'all on TV. Y'all better stop identifying yourselves with these celebrities and these reality TV people. You are not them and they are not you. That lady have to do what's best for that lady. I'm talking about Miss uh, Samuels, Miss Monique. She got to do what's best for her. Y'all be living y'all lives vicariously through these people. And it shows. It's to the point where it, it physically and negatively, emotionally, spiritually, mentally affect y'all in real life. They on TV putting on a show. Some of it's real, but a lot of it's scripted. They putting on a show and y'all really in real life having that stuff affect you at home, your kids. and Y'all, listen, y'all got to be strong. Y'all, I, I preach this all the time. Y'all have to stop putting yourselves in the shoes of these people. You are supposed to be entertained. That means you watch it, you like it, you hate it or whatever. Then you go home and you think about something else. That's not what y'all doing. Y'all have to be strong. Now, this next two sets of people, they get it. This lady, the first lady says, I wish people stopped telling women to stay in an unhappy relationship in marriage. If you like being unhappy in marriages, being in unhappy marriages, I'm sorry, and relationships, that's on you. But leave her alone. Mind the business that pays you. Another one says, it's sad y'all shaming her for wanting to be happy and telling her to stay because of the kids. Kids can also tell when parents aren't happy. Please do what works best for you. Now, these two women get it. They get it. And again, it's nobody promoting that she gets divorced. It's more or less like people just saying, hey, girl, it, in this day and age, you don't have to be stuck in a marriage that makes you completely uncomfortable or miserable, sad. You're, you're losing weight and hell falling out because you don't know what's going on. You don't have to put up with that. And if the decision right now will be best that you do something for you, which is, hey, just separate and have a very healthy co parenting situation, then I don't see why, why there's an issue. But I want to let y'all hear it a little bit more of this video and then I'm gonna come back with my final commentary um so let me see 
how do you keep out the noise and find your balance and peace during this time? So one of the major things for me has been really finding myself. Um, I've been on this self-love journey. I never realized how much I didn't love myself. That was like a huge revelation because I always felt because I'm a very secure person, I thought that that was self-love. Um, I wasn't aware of myself, you know? Um, I was completely unaware of myself. Um, even watching last year when we were on Love and Marriage DC, I mean, I was going through it. Like I was yelling, I was upset. That was me crying out. That was me like really fighting. Like I was like on my last leg fighting for my marriage um, and really hoping that we could see where each other were, where each other was and, and try to get on the same page. Um, but when I look back on it, even with the editing trickery, at the end of the day, my response was still my response, you know, and I, and I take accountability for that. And um, I would never, I wouldn't want to be with a person like that, that is just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I also realized that my approach became that because I was so desperate, like to be heard. I was so desperate, like, like, come on, we got to make this, this work. But then you get to a point where you realize that begins to tear you down yourself and the other person and then you're trying to pick up the pieces and build it back and it just becomes this roller coaster you know and it becomes more and more difficult so I did not want to get to that point where now there's so much friction and tension that now we can't even parent our kids and so many times you see couples take to social media bash each other and it's like how does this help the kids that you're raising it's awful and I'm never going to be that person like at the end of the day the reasons that led Chris and I to be where we are are our reasons that's our business it's what stays in our house and our children are the ones that are exposed to those things they know they take witness to everything that happens here you know and we're trying to do things that will turn it around um and sometimes that doesn't always mean doing it together you know so um yeah, we, we have love for each other. We'll always have love for each other. And we're going to do the very best that we can do to co-parent and raise our children um, the right way and allow them to see a different type of example of, of partnership. So we have a new normal. That's what I tell my kids. I'm like, we have a new normal now, you know? So so uh, someone said, how did you know to walk away? Um, I was in therapy and my counselor asked me, she said, I don't want you to answer this now. She said, but what is it that you want? If you can have the ideal marriage, if you can have everything that it is that you want from a partner, she said, what is it that you want? And she told me to write those things down. So I wrote those things down. Then she said, okay, if he is unable to do those things for you and he is the same as he is right now and he never changes, are you able to live life with him for the rest of your life? And she said, I want you to think about it. And the next time we meet, we'll talk about it. But she's like, I don't want your answer right now. And I took two weeks writing down all of the pros, all of the cons, and really, really, really thinking about it. And I just got to the point where I was like, I was in a place where I was so miserable. And I didn't, and it wasn't just like all on him. It was also just with myself, like dealing with my own issues and trauma understanding myself and why I respond and react the ways I do going through my childhood I'm talking about y'all I've done some work I've been doing some work and it wasn't easy it is not easy to look at the things about yourself that you don't like and that you don't love and say you know what I'm gonna love me anyway I'm gonna love the bad parts of me I'm gonna love the good parts which is easier you know but even the things that I don't like about myself I have to really embrace that and love that like, oh my God, it has been quite a ride. Um, but I was determined to really do the work and grow. And the more I grew and the more I started to realize myself and I started to create boundaries for myself, um, that's when I knew I am no longer the person that I was that walked down the aisle 11 years ago. And you get to a point where you just accept the fact that this is the fact, like this is where it is, you know? Um, and, and that's what led me to the point where I was just like, you know what? I feel like this will be best because if we keep going down this road and we're bickering at each other and we're not able to communicate, sometimes not even talking to each other, then how is that going to affect our children? 
and that's when I started thinking because I was thinking like most people it's like okay we're going to stay together for the kids but that never works because staying together for the kids means that you're giving them a terrible example of what a relationship should be like you know so um so yeah so the very first thing that stuck out with this second part that I'm sharing with you guys or with this last part I'm sharing with you guys is the fact that Monique basically was honest enough to say, hey, look, um, I did the work. And the reason I know that she did the work is because she's not blaming everything on Chris. She's taking a lot of accountability. I can tell by the way she's describing the therapy sessions, everything that she's gone through. She's definitely done the work. And it's not a bad thing to put you first. See, she had developed some boundaries and some standards that she probably hadn't had at the beginning of the marriage. She probably relied heavy, heavily on Chris to love her and not knowing that she really don't love herself. Because like she said, being confident is not self-love. Self-love is loving the bad and the good and being able to exist without another person. Their love is an additive to you, right? So the way she speaks, I know that she's actually done the work. Unlike Mel, the only reason I say Mel has done some work, but she still has more to go. Mel can't even be in the room with Martel without feeling the way. And I'm not saying that she should have to or anything, but in this situation, it's different because they've come to a ground or common ground and she's come to a common ground within herself that, hey, look, I'm not going to be able to sustain this marriage and I'm hurt, but it's okay. It's okay. But I refuse to just take anything and any little pieces of leftover Just for the sake of saying, hey, yeah, I got a husband. Or just for the sake of saying, my kids have their family, their father under the roof, I'm sorry. That's where us as black women make mistakes every single time. It's to the point where her saying that sounds like alien speaking to us. It really does. Her saying that I did the work and I took accountability, that's the big one. I took accountability for myself. It wasn't just him. I realized I changed. He's changed. These are the things that I feel like I require in a marriage. He does not meet those and that's okay. We don't have to be bitter about it. We just choose to just go our separate ways and develop a healthy co-parenting relationship because I don't want to have that example for my children. I don't want my children to see that that's the way a relationship should work. Like she's done the work, y'all. And I, for one, want to give Monique all the kudos in the world because... You can tell in her speech, you can tell in her confidence, you can tell in the way that she's actually even breaking down the sessions and and explaining this stuff to you that she's done the work. And when you do the work, you realize that, hey, I'm okay without this or this person. Let me give y'all a little brief of my history. I was married to my daughter's father and we have been together since I was in ninth grade. Okay. Ninth grade. When we split almost into my, almost in my late twenties. I was literally like a lost puppy in the middle of a highway. I had no idea what to do. I had held on to that marriage with that man because I was more afraid than anything. I was like, if I leave him, who's going to be with me? I don't know how to date. I had all those insecurities. I blamed him for everything. And don't get me wrong, he cheated. But I blamed him and took no accountability for anything that I could have done in the marriage. Not to make him cheat, obviously, because he's going to do what he wants to do. But just to cause any type of distress to the marriage I I did all of that listen I was sick when we finally split it took me to go to bed one night I had been fed up and I was like I wanted to say it then I wanted to tell him then that I wanted a divorce but it's kind of crazy because it's similar to what she said so I went to bed and I prayed and I said Lord I said most high God if I wake up in the morning and I don't want to be with this man, and I still don't have the desire to be married to this man, then that's going to be my sign that I need to go. Because typically, you know how they say sleep on stuff? I slept on it, and I woke up with the same convictions I had the night before when I went to bed. And that's when I knew, hey, it's going to be rough, but you're going to have to get out of there. And I did, and we got divorced, we split, and I was lost. I'm not going to lie. And I still was blaming him. It wasn't until I got into therapy and started doing the work, because this is another thing we mistake as women. We believe all you have to do is just go be alone. See, I, I made that mistake too. For the first maybe three years, I just went by myself. I didn't date nobody. I didn't talk. I just went off by myself, right? I didn't want to deal with nobody or whatever the case because I wanted to so-called heal, but I didn't realize I wasn't healing anything. I was just basically transferring the energy from a marriage to a single, being single. 
I didn't change anything. So when I got into another relationship, I was bringing that old baggage and that old BS to this new person. And I'm realizing, wait a minute, it's me. Like I have to change some things about me. So that's when I got into therapy and that's when I learned to actually do the work. Listen, let me tell y'all something, black women. When you do the work, you can be in, a, in your ex's company. I'm talking about he could bring 50, 11 women around you and it won't phase you one bit. Speaking of, my ex-husband is over in Honduras right now. He's getting married to Sunday. I sent him a congratulations because I've done the work. I'm saying that to say it is very imperative that us as black women not only, number one, do the work, but we have to set them boundaries. And we have to say, hey, I'm willing to sacrifice. I'm just not willing to sacrifice me. It's okay to be selfish. It's okay. I mean, I, I promote marriage. I want marriage. I want black men to marry black women. I do. I do. If you got to creep out or go out your race, I don't care. Whatever. I want marriage for black women. I do. But I don't want it at any cost. I don't want it at a cost to where it's it's affecting us negatively and it's draining us. And then we're, we're stressed and distressed and it's a whole lot of stuff going on. That's my take on it. And I, again, I want to say shout out to Monique for everything that she's done as far as doing the work. She deserves everything that she's got going on. Um, I hope her nothing but the best. I hope Chris nothing but the best. And I hope those kids find this new normal that she set for them to be like a good thing. And I, I think it will be because I saw the video of them opening the gifts for the little girl's birthday. And I, I think the new normal is actually probably better than the old regular. But y'all drop down in the comments and let me know what y'all think about uh, Monique Samuels and her idea to just go ahead on and call it quits and them to split amicably. Because we all know in marriage, especially one where money is involved, the type of money Chris got, child, it being scratched and scraped and, and being a windmill on each other, girl, please. But the fact that it appears, because again, I'm not in a house, but it appears that it's amicable. That's a big salute to me. Huge salute. Y'all drop down in the comments and let me know what y'all think. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, hit the notification bell. I'm sorry. I'm all over the place. Um, I'm really looking forward to your thoughts and I will see y'all hoes later. Bye. Mr. Carroll. How you give the voodoo doll time to talk? I don't get no fucking time to talk. Who the voodoo doll is? The nigga you just had up here.